What's up guys, Brett Okamoto reporting from Yaz Island, Abu Dhabi, and look who we ran into. UFC Hall of Famer, WWE referee, yeah, you saw me very, out very mediocre golfer, Daniel Cormier. <laughs> hey, what's you up, saw man? me out there, right? <laughs> Yo, what size shoes you need, son? I you need like a see, 10, I, I actually, 11. You didn't watch. I don't like WWE. We're not friends. That tells I got nothing me we are not friends. Against that that right there tells me we're not friends. Thing, man. That's crazy. I, it looked like you know killed from the Instagram You know what the problem is? You're too good looking. You're too good looking for professional wrestling. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of sad. <laughs> You're an elitist. No, it was a fun time, man. I enjoyed it. I loved it. I loved every. Yeah, I'm a life. lifetime fan. I know. You know, I've been I've been loving it my whole life. So You're living the good. life, dude. I'm living the life. Going to NFL games. I mean, think about how beautiful. Look at look how beautiful it is here. I know. Like we're in Yaz. Golf course right yeah. over here. DC's been trying to trying to make bets with me on the golf course. Look, look my boy Rizvan right there. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're having a good time, and, we're, and Saturday is going to be a great time because yeah. we're going to see some great fights. You sat down with uh, Charles. I didn't yes. get a chance to see it yet. What did what'd you, you take away from it? Oh, man, just his confidence. His confidence is he's sure. Yeah. You know, I thought that his reaction to saying he was going to knock him out in the first round was in response to the disrespect he feels from the Makachev camp, yeah. but it isn't. It's rooted in his training and his belief that he's actually going to knock this guy out in the first round. Yeah. I said, it's a big claim, Charles. He goes, but I believe it yeah. with all of me. Give us, give us some inside scoops on, on Islam. We know that obviously you're very close mm -hmm. with his team. You know him very well. Javi Mendez in his corner. Give us some insight. Give us some behind the scenes stuff. Man, they've been Islam. training. Those guys have been training hard. They've been in Abu Dhabi for a while. They said they spent over seven figures on training camp preparing this guy. Seven figures. Seven figures on training camp. Preparing this guy for this fight. It's the most you ever so spent I'm talking on about, I mean, 50 grand. <laughs> I spent 50 grand on a training camp, and that's building a cage yeah. inside of my garage. <laughs> this guy, they have spent so much to prepare this guy for this moment from the training facilities to the hotel rooms to the training partners to everything. They have spent a ton of money to prepare this guy for this fight to ensure that all things are covered. They've done everything to get him ready. And uh, for everything that I've heard, because I haven't been in the camp, they've done it here is that he is as ready as they've ever seen him. You know what I love about this fight is, uh, well, a lot of things, but the timing of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, two years ago when Habib walked away, like, we all knew, we all just kind of figured, right? Like, Islam is going, he's going to get there, and then At he's probably going to win the yeah. title. Like, he's just, he's been a favorite, huge favorite in all of these fights. But but we're, we're getting it at a time where no one wants to bet against Charles Oliveira, yeah. you know? And with Islam, you know, I, I, the one thing that I did see from your, your interview with Charles is that you think, he thought that he was getting a little disrespect from Islam. Mm -hmm. Is Islam kind of, a, I wouldn't say overlooking mm -hmm. him, but do you think he's like, this guy's not even that good? Yeah. Like, like, what is the, the real sense that Islam has in terms of like the challenge? So I think the, prob I think the problem is, is that they're very matter of fact, all these Russian guys. Yeah, yeah. So it comes off as disrespectful when in reality, he respects Charles Oliveira to the fullest, and so does Habib and everyone else. Yeah. But they're very matter of fact. And if you haven't been around them for a lot of time, yeah. you'll take it in that way. When yeah. in reality, they're telling you the truth yeah. as they see it. And it's pretty much the way that these guys live. Habib was the same way, right? It's the I mean, exact he, same He kind of thought that, like, like he just like, I'm going to go take that guy down and make him tired. Yes, and that, absolutely. That's and he would say it. Yeah. Right? So it's like, it's not disrespectful. It's just them speaking their truth. But the reality is this. The, the, the beauty in this fight is that we have seen Islam Makashev dominate now, especially in the last four fights where he's mm -hmm. finishing guys. Mm -hmm. We have seen Charles Oliveira dominate. Ten finishes, 11 wins in a row, and yeah, yeah. Tony Ferguson just not tapping is the only reason this guy <laughs> right. has won 11 in a row. Yeah. Most men would have tapped. We're getting it at the right time, but we're also getting at a time where you feel like Islam could lose. And yeah. that is why the fight is so good. Mm -hmm. Because you very rarely thought that Habib was going to lose. Yeah. But you thought maybe Conor could knock him out. So the fight was massive. Yeah. This is what we got here with Islam and Charles Oliveira. Because Oliveira is the one guy that I think can actually win the fight against. Such a good fight, dude. It's Do you think it's going to end in the first round? Both these guys basically think it, have said it is. Mm. Do you think it's going to end quick? Or you no, think we're going to get no. a longer fight? No, we're going we're gonna, to. Really I, I think fight. this fight goes long. Okay. I think this will be a long fight. We're going to see both of these guys have moments. I think that it's going to be a very competitive fight. I think it's, I think it's going to be fun, man. Yeah. I think it'll be really fun. And we just spent a lot of time talking. We haven't even gotten to the second fight, I the co-main event, Bantamweight fight. Can you fight, believe that? Aljamain Sterling fighting TJ Dillashaw. To me, the biggest question here is just it's around TJ. You mm. know, when TJ was in his prime fighting regularly, the guy was like top five pound for yeah, pound. Yeah, for sure. You know, but now he's like been off for two years, like coming off of an injury, you know, like – is that sort of the biggest question for you too? Mm -hmm. like, like, like just what kind of version of TJ Dillashaw do we get? Yes, but 
it also is for me. How does T.J. Dillashaw approach Aljamain Sterling? How does he get him to overreact? Because when Aljamain struggled with Piotr Jan in fight number one, he was overreacting to everything and overfighting mm. everything. When he's fighting calm, he's a problem. But if T.J. can use his movement to set traps, make Aljo overextend himself, mm. then he's got a chance. But we're talking about a guy that has won the UFC championship two times. I mean, who wins yeah. a title three times in the same division? Dude, I was going to ask you. Randy can you Couture. Put, can you put that into it, perspective? It's, it's, like, how hard is it to win a championship bro, three different times? Randy Couture's done it. Yeah. And uh, there's one more. Randy Couture did it in the same weight class. And there was one more person. I can't remember who it is. But, I mean, we're talking way. Yeah. In modern mixed martial arts, you don't win the title, lose the title, win the title, lose the title, win the title. Yeah. It doesn't happen. Yeah. TJ Dillashaw is trying to do something historical this weekend. Yeah. And if he can get it done... I mean, we're all going to have to kind of tip our hat to the man. Yeah. Last thing, Sean O'Malley taking on Piotr Jan. We watched the press conference yesterday. Were you surprised that Jan shoved him? No. I what, wasn't surprised. What do you think that – do, do you take anything from it? I, I Why think, did he do that? I think that Piotr Jan is trying to kind of play the game with him a little bit. Like, okay. hey, welcome to the top. Uh -huh. Like, welcome to the top of the game. <clears throat> right? So, Sean O'Malley has been moved up very quickly. Yeah. I know time has passed since he's been in the UFC, but he had fought no one ranked. Then he fought Munoz and had that fight. Now he's fighting the number one guy in the in the division, yeah. a former champion. So Piotr's like, hey, welcome to the mountaintop. Yeah. Right? And kind of shoved him off of him and shows him, like, listen, guys may respect you. I don't. Mm, mm. Right? So it's much bigger than him just shoving him. This is mental warfare for Piotr Jan. Yeah. I don't know if mental warfare is going to be enough to beat or break Sean O'Malley because this is a young man that has the utmost confidence in himself and believes that he's going to wipe out Piotr Jan, yeah. which is crazy because <laughs> Piotr Jan is just really, really good. He really, really good. does have that confidence. He that does. That confidence is very genuine. But I don't want to make too much of the shove, but I just thought it was out of character. Yeah. And, and so, we, you know, it's, it's an obvious thing to, like, mm -hmm. make comparisons of, like, Sean O'Malley, Conor McGregor. Like, we always do it anytime yep, a guy yep, is, like, yep. starting to get a lot of hype. I'm not making a comparison really between, between the two. But one thing Conor did as he was coming up was his presence got people to do things that they didn't yes, normally yes, do. Yes, yes, and yes. so when when when, you when saw Conor shoved him, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, oh, interesting. Yeah, you know? but Connor would dig more. Connor yeah. would dig to draw that out. That that shove was more Peter. It wasn't Sean attacking his family or attacking yeah, yeah. him and yeah. all of his accomplishments to draw out that reaction from Piotr. Yeah. Connor was always digging. Yeah. Right. Connor was that guy that was digging and everybody wanted to shut him up, yeah. but they couldn't. Yeah. Right. So yeah. everybody overreacted. This guy, that was him. That was Piotr Jan saying, hey, welcome to the show, bud. It's going to be fun, man. It's one of those nights where you, you just feel like it, like something crazy is going to happen. And then, oh, my God, we got two fights left, three fights left. And then something crazier mm -hmm. happens. Like It's, it's just nice. one of those nights that builds. Mm -hmm. It feels like one of those nights in Abu Dhabi. Oh, we're going to let him go because he's a busy man. But thank you for the time. And we got to get on the golf course. I guess, yeah, later. dude, tonight, nine holes, night golf. They do night golf here. It's so hot in this place. <laughs> That you have to golf at night, and me, Charlie, and Brett, we're gonna be out on the and course. And he's a sweater. He's a sweater. I'm sweating too. already. <laughs> Not as much as my boy Anik yesterday, though. Yeah. My boy was sweating in, on the stage, but it is what it is. Let's go, man. Thanks UFC for watching. Yep. Enjoy crazy. your C280. It's going crazy. <laughs>